and it's working. We can put the many landing gears up. Take a look at this. Now on the route between Palma de Mallorca and the city of Frankfurt, there are 20 flights per day in the summer season. Skyscanner is full of flights that go just directly in one day. And the question is, well, can we bring this down to 10? We can maybe use a bigger aircraft. But the problem is they mostly use bigger fuel and, well, mostly the cabin configuration is a little bit, you know, more generous for the passenger. You really wouldn't want to be flying a A320 across the Atlantic in a normal cabin configuration. So I came up with an idea to fix this problem. Let me introduce you to the new 737 MAX um, twin. That's a great name. Yes, everybody, I have been a genius once again. Without having to re-engineer a whole entire airplane, we can just recycle what Boeing designed in the 1950s. I mean, that's what they did with the 737 MAX anyway. Recycle designs. How about we bolt two Boeing 737 fuselage together with a huge wing in the middle of them and a third engine? This way, as you can see, we have twice the amount of passengers they can fit, but not twice the amount of fuel used because we only need three engines. I don't know if this airplane is going to fly or not. This is absolutely stupid. But you mean, you know, twin fuselage plane like this have definitely been made before. I mean, the P-82 twin Mustang was actually built quite a lot. And the Germans also made a few twin airplanes. Look at this Dornier. So this uh, shouldn't be any problem whatsoever. Now, it's quite of a guessing game which cockpit works now. Of course, it is the right one and it works magnificently. I've already started up the cockpit here. The engines are already running and everything works just as it should. If we look to the side, we can see our other passengers. Hello. Now, obviously, with the concept of a twin fuselage airplane like this, we have the problem that passengers, of course, cannot just like transfer between the two. I mean, OK, they can. We can just open the emergency Yes, everybody, look at that. Never mind, we can just transfer the passengers like that. But no, obviously, these planes would have to be boarded independently. And the problem is that you can't really use a jetway that way, right? You can't really, maybe you could, maybe you could, but not in the simulator. What I wonder, though, is, I mean, if the pilots were to sit in the right cockpit and fly the airplane from the right cockpit, because as we can see, if we go into the left cockpit, this right here is the left cockpit. It doesn't work. It's completely blank. Maybe we can fill it up with some seats and even, you know, spare some weight as well. Avionics like this are super heavy. I wonder whether the prices in the left fuselage would be more. Uh, maybe? Not sure. Now, I think a big problem will definitely be pushing back. Uh, let's let me try to fly. I mean, push back straight. Problem is you kind of need two pushbackers, right? Um, everybody, I'm a genius. I've made this a lot better, this plane, obviously. All right, so what is it going to do now, this pushback track? I wonder. Ah, so this thing pretends like the nose landing gear is here, which obviously isn't. But everybody, this actually kind of works. Uh, let me go and finish off our pushback here. Obviously, we have now three reversers that all work magnificently. So can definitely see now i think one interesting part will definitely be taxiing this airplane because obviously you have to stay on the taxi line with that middle engine right here okay look at that <laughs> okay but we have to you know taxi the plane from the cockpit obviously so you'd have to kind of look to the left here to see what's going on yes would you see this though kind of works yeah, okay, maybe you need like a video camera system, to be honest, to very much stay on taxiway. Problem is, not really that this airplane is now super wide. The wingspan is around, I think, like 60 meters. I mean, the A380 is actually a bit bigger, 80 meters, anyway. But what definitely is a big problem is our landing gear that's immensely wide apart. So that will definitely not, you know, make this airplane suitable for most airports. Now we have a problem already. The airport that the 737 normally flies to probably won't be able to be served. This thing is just way too wide. We probably won't be able to properly enter the runway from here. Come on. Yes, it actually the plane taxis surprisingly well. We now have some sort of these two nose wheels that steer. That's all right. Let me see if we can just use this entry to take off. Yes, take a look at this. Rudder, of course, moose. We've got two vertical stabilizers. Both of them work. All right, would you see this? I think I am a genius indeed. I don't know why that third engine right here is hanging so low, by the way. That's very dangerous anyway. All right, so let's nicely fill up the airplane. Obviously, everything is very nicely simulated. We've got packs in the right and packs in the left. Very, very good. We now do weigh quite a lot. Whereas the 737-800 has maximum takeoff weight at 70 tons, this plane can easily fly at even 125 tons. I think this won't probably fly. We don't have enough engines, do we? 
All right, let's try to take off. Yes, everybody, look at my genius. Time to really do this. I don't know why the cockpit looks just absolute crap. Let's go take take off. Come on. Yes, all is well. I think the biggest problem here genuinely is keeping center line. It's weird that you're purposely flying this airplane in the right lane somewhat. Look at this. But all right, this is working out. And you know, the ND wings barely hang over the runway. That's great. Let's go ahead and try to take off here. Full power. Yes, look at that. We might need some more flaps. We already had 150 knots. Yes, look at my genius. I'm actually kind of proud. We are flying the twin 737 and it's working. We can put the many landing gears up. Take a look at this. Beautiful. That comes up nicely. Yes, everybody. I spent four hours yesterday uh, de developing this airplane and designing it, uh, which is actually not that bad. I don't think Boeing could come up with a working mock-up simulator plane in that amount of time. They should hire me. I can fix all their company's issues with my grandiose ideas. I didn't expect the plane to perform as well as it does. It is severely underpowered, to be fair, but it actually doesn't fly that badly. Look, we are able to climb and keep some speed and the autopilot actually works. Yes, we can put the autopilot on and the airplane works just okay. Yes, if this airplane was to come out in real life, I would probably make a video complaining how um, under powered it is indeed i mean we're running on pretty hefty weight to be fair we're almost as heavy as two fully loaded 737s so this is great now i took off with some flaps deployed i think i could you know improve this design by adding a flap surface in some sort here look at this yes my friends we've done it now uh, i think there's some trim issues that for some reason autopilot has to very severely point the yoke to the left in order to actually stay on course. Um, I can't explain why that is. Maybe the wing is a bit oddly sh- It's not- It's not particularly straight, is it? Yes! Yeah, this is quite interesting. The airplane is able to, you know, fly itself relatively well, too. Look, I'm now trying to come in for some sort of auto landing right here. Yes, I hope it's able to catch a localizer. Uh, come on, please do that. Yeah, look at this. Now, you'd of course have to somehow store the antennas, I think, in the middle of the airplane. I think it's, it would be hard to put the antennas in either one of the fuselages, but you could figure that out. By the way, the reason why the plane was banking earlier on was... Oh, f Nah, the FAA will pass that. But it was because more people were sitting in the right airplane than in the left airplane, I think. So yes, weight and bounce. That's actually a big drawback. Hmm. I think I've, I, have, I have a stupid idea. Now, what I'm doing right here is, I think, wrong. I think the ILS antenna, and this is funny, is located on the right fuselage. And so the airplane is showing that we're actually kind of all right on glide slow, but we aren't. God, this airplane needs quite a lot of speed to stay afloat because we lack so much flap surface. Come on, stay afloat. Don't die. We need to land properly. So let me see if we can get the glide slope right. So we want to be a little bit right of the runway. Kind of like that. That definitely takes some getting used to. Yes. Let's do it. Yes, I think I've done it. And I think I've landed on the on the center line. And we can stop now with our three engines. Yeah, okay. We need to equip that middle wing with a little bit more stuff. But now we have four four set of brakes right here and those stop the airplane just fine because they are all braking yes and three reverse thrusters look at this everybody in front of you says the genius now will this airplane you know win a performance competition probably not i don't think michael leary would like this concept very much the idea that we're not able to take off from most airports in the world, actually. This thing needs a longer runway than the A380, and I mean that because these three engines are actually not really enough to make this airplane powerful. Maybe you could fit bigger engines to this, you know? Look at this, look at this. And also, this plane now has 370 passengers, which isn't even much. Like, you could just rather use the 787-10 or something. Actually, we were able to take off from Key West. But that's because we have actually no one sitting in those planes. Hmm. So yes, this has been a great video of me practically just disproving my concept, actually. I kind of realized that now, no, this is actually a great one. 
I think we've got our first customer, Al-Qaeda. Everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.